Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to make some home decor colorful crystals and also show you a water purification method called flocculation. Wondering what the connection is coming up right after this quick intro. Welcome back guys, I'm Josh and you're watching my channel video Epo. In this project, we'll be making or growing custom colorful crystals and for this project, we'll be using Olam. What I'm about to show you is not something new and has been done for centuries. Olam comes in product form or crystals like these and the most commonly used Olam is potassium aluminum sulfate. Google for Olam uses and you'll find a long list but two common uses I've seen is one, purification of water and two, an effective after shave. Olam can arrest bleeding by blood coagulation, combat razor burn and serve as an antiseptic. Believe me, it is still being used as an effective aftershave in barber shops widely across India. Olam is soluble in water and for water purification purposes, just have to dissolve a little bit in water and you will soon see all suspended impurities in water settle down to the bottom. This method is called flocculation. Impurities in water are in a suspended state and do not have enough density to sink to the bottom. The Olam particles combine with these impurities and pull them down to the bottom and hence we can see the water is much clearer after the Olam treatment. I got this Olam from a local shop, cost very less but you can find it online. In South India, you will find hangings like these which usually have a white stone which is an Olam crystal. Although I do not know the logical reason behind this face and the conch shell, Olam is tied onto this to absorb moisture and the dust suspended in air. Moisture in air breeds various kinds of fungus and it is just spread easily. This has an antiseptic effect and also works like a silica gel, absorbing excess moisture from the environment it's placed. Now moving ahead with making crystals, I need to crush this into a powder. The goal here is to make it finer so that it dissolves in water quickly. I'm using this grinding stone which I have borrowed from my wife. Olam is non-toxic in low doses and since it's soluble in water, I can wash this after the intended purpose. Once it was crushed to powder, a sieve was used to separate the fine powdery olam. It has the consistency of wheat flour and it should be able to dissolve in hot water. Notice the difference in color when it's in rock form and then when it's crushed to powder. The next thing would be to prepare the container where the crystal needs to grow and I'm using this transparent glass. It should be able to take some hot water without cracking. By resting a popsicle stick and hanging a small crystal from it, should be able to get the process of precipitation started. By taking a small crystal and wrapping it with a swing thread should look like this. It was then tied to the popsicle stick and rolled over to get the apt height of suspension. If you really want to be meticulous, just trace the circumference of the glass on a cardboard. This can then be cut and making small slits like this will make it an improvised lid with slots for the crystals to be suspended. Once crushed to powder, keep it aside and boil 2 cups of water. Once the water came to boiling, 1 cup of olive powder was added to it. Constant stirring for a few minutes dissolves it completely. Add more till the water becomes cloudy. Then I poured it into a glass and filtered the solution while I poured. You can now see how cloudy and saturated this solution is. This is the time to add some food coloring to this solution. More the color, the denser the color of the crystal is going to be. Once done, place the popsicle stick with a tiny crystal from top. Now we wait for 8 hours and let this solution sit idle. This is the result after 4 hours. It looks really nice and close up. I'm going to let it sit and let it grow overnight and see what happens. But before that, let's pour the solution out and have a look inside. The crystals have formed in the bottom as well. I could leave this as such and place a candle inside but that is not what I'm after. Therefore I crushed it again, reheated the solution and let it sit for 4 more hours. Guess what, the crystal has grown bigger in size than I need. Now that's a nice turquoise crystal. And so we can indeed make our own crystals. Let's take this iron and make a pendant. I got these hooks from the craft store which are used to make jewelry. I tried to stick the olam powder using super glue and it did not work out for me. Therefore a small crystal was tied onto it. The previous process was repeated but this time with a different color. Here comes the moment of truth. It is not as dark as I wanted it to be but this looks fine too. It looks really nice when completed. Next I made a blue crystal pendant and I was very careful to pull it out at the right time. Then I added a silver chain and now I am all set to impress my wife. If you ever tried geode hunting and came back one with frustration, here is a quick remedy. Look for the rocks with a hollow concave side and we can grow our own geode. Since we want the crystals to grow from inside, a thick coat of school glue was applied and the fine crystals of olum were stuck on it. Now this piece of rock was immersed in a green olum solution with the concave side facing bottom. I've chosen a green dye to mimic naturally occurring stones and here the crystals have grown on top as well. It can be cleared but this rock might need one more session inside the solution.
I'm also thinking of making a crystal candle holder and I'm using a lid of a mason jar to make it. The outer paint was removed using Dremel tool. Using super glue, a coupling nut was attached. It was then placed into a glass container. Before doing it, school glue was applied on it, then a thick layer of olive powder was wrapped around it. This setup was then placed in a glass container with the colored olive solution. And for the candle holder, it's a big flop. Let me just pour out the water and show you what has happened. The crystals have formed on the bottom and not where I wanted them to be. I went ahead with another try where I wrapped the nut with a thread. It was let to float but it wouldn't stay at the same place. So a neodymium magnet was placed in the bottom of the vessel and another one on top of the lid. This worked like a cool magnetic anchor. The candle holder is still a mess. I tried another version with clay lamp placed in the container and it did not work out as well. The clay lamp at least had a few crystals growing on it which gave me some sort of a hope. At this point I realized that it needs to be suspended inside the solution without touching the walls and the plan seems to work. I'm really happy the way it has turned out to be. Initially we had some failures but the end result is fantastic. Let's have a closer look. If you are a fan of glitters, go for it and maybe you should give it a coat of clear spray lacquer as well. It would make it waterproof and the crystal will last a little bit longer. Now we can get similar results by using borax. I used alum because it's a lot cheaper. I spent around 100 rupees for 500 grams which is less than 2 dollars. So it kind of works for me. Hope you like this video and if you do, you might like some of my other videos as well. Guys, honestly, I need your support. So please hit that subscribe button. I'll be back with another video next week. Until then, bye.